the rule that I want to establish before I establish any other rules for Awakening Teen Camp is that you guys would lay down the sin and the shame that has weighed all of us, myself included, every single one of us on staff, that we would lay down that shame, lay down that sin, and behold the living God and how he feels about us. For the joy set before him, it pleased the Father. God is in the heavens, and whatever he pleases, he does. We hear these phrases over and over in the Bible. If you look through them over and over and over, it says, The Lord is gracious, compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. Whatever you've heard about yourself, whatever you've told yourself, that you're nothing, that you're worthless, if somebody has said that to you, if somebody has hurt you, abused you, if somebody has lied to you, Satan has lied to you, I want to open up our hearts for the next two weeks to behold God in all of his glory and all of his great love for us. Because it's true. There is good news for all of us here. That Jesus Christ for the joy set before him. The joy that was set before him was you. It was you. It was me. Gave himself unto death so we could be free from sin. Amen. Now is that not good? I'm telling you from here on out. I want to set that ground rule that we are not here to talk to God about our sin. We are not here to talk about to, to God about the horrible things we did yesterday. We are not here to talk to about God about how horrible we are, about how messed up we are. We are here to say one thing to him. What do you say about me? Oh, God, what do you say about me? Do you know what he says? He says, I formed you in your mother's womb. You are not forgotten. You are not cast off. But the living God has real emotion for your heart. Real desire for you. I'm not talking to a group. I'm talking to an individual for every single one of you. God has real emotion. Real desire for your heart. He was thinking about you when he was on the cross. And they said, come down from the cross, Jesus. You're embarrassing yourself. And he said, no, for them, I will give myself. Oh, because it gives me great joy and pleasure to lay down my life for every single one of them. God was in heaven watching his son get crushed on the cross. And you know what he said? It pleased the father to crush his son. Isaiah 58 says it gave him great joy because he knew what he was getting. Paul tells us in Ephesians that he prays for the church and asks that the church would know one thing in Ephesus. The riches of the glory of Jesus Christ's inheritance in who? In us. That we would know that he has, that God, the God who created your limbs, your arms, your joints, your bones, your feet, your skin, everything. The stars, the moon, the sun. That same God created you in his image. And he said, for them, I am willing to come down from heaven and die. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Isn't this amazing? The living God loves us. And so this is my rule. We're going to transition to talk about the rest of the rules. I'm going to uh, invite some of our staff. But we're going to pray first. And I want to set this ground rule. Everyone listening? We are to behold the living God. For the next two weeks, you have one assignment from here, from me. To behold the living God in all of his glory. You have one assignment. Behold his thoughts and his affections for you. And it's really easy. 
It takes no effort. You sit in the chair during worship, during prayer, during the sermon. You hold out your hands and you say, Jesus, what are you saying to me? You pause. Wait for him. He'll speak. I promise. Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? How does the Father feel about me? And every time that, that accusing voice comes up in your heart, oh, but I, I, that horrible lust that I committed two weeks ago, I want you to go take that lust and put it before the throne of grace and say, God, how did you feel about me even in the midst of my sin? How did you feel about me in the midst of my depravity? I'm going to tell you, he loves you. I am not going to leave here and I'm not going to let you guys leave Kansas City as a people continued to be beaten down by the lie of the enemy that says sin is your lot, that says shame is your lot, that says you can't ever get over your struggles with sin. I am here on a mission to make sure you know that the living God has a plan for your life. And he has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. He knows what happened to you yesterday. And he says, I have not forgotten you. In fact, do you know what he was doing? He tells us that Jesus is the faithful witness forever making intercession for us. Do you know what that means? It means he was mentioning your name before the father. When you were in sin, he was saying, oh, God, but that one. Oh, Holy Spirit, speak to them. It means that when you were sinning last week, the father wasn't saying, curse them. <laughs> he wasn't. It means that when you were in sin last week, his desire was for you. Sin will send us to hell, but oh, how his love will set us free. Let's take the next two weeks and re rid ourselves of sin and shame and come awakened to the love of Jesus Christ and his affections for us. Oh, how he loves us. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray right now. Everyone close your eyes. Everyone in this room, close your eyes. I want you to picture the cross and picture every sin, horrible thing that you've done. And I want you to lay it down in front of that cross. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are done talking to you about our issues. We're laying it at the foot of the cross. Oh, how your grace has overcome us. How your mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Father, we ask that you would come and set us free from sin and death. We lay every accusing thought, every accusing voice, every, uh, every vain attempt to try to become something apart from one loved by Christ. We lay it at the foot of the cross right now, and it's done. We say, Jesus, we repent for our sin. We repent for what we did. Give us forgiveness. Forgive us, O oh God. Forgive us, Jesus, for sinning against you. Now open up your eyes. We're done. That's it. From here on out, we are going to open up our eyes and look and gaze at the living God. Give yourself to the place of prayer, to the place of giving your heart to him. And I guarantee you, you will walk away in two weeks a different person. I guarantee you, if you gaze on the beauty of God and take your eyes off your sin and your shame, you will walk away from this place a completely different person, a whole person alive on the inside, ready to be a messenger to the nations. Amen.